All right, hey everybody. Uh, thanks for joining Tam Lab 22 today. Uh, it's May 16th and we have uh, Joey on today talking about uh, VROPS for Horizon, uh, set up an overview and conversation uh, prior to starting the recording, it sounds like this might be uh, hitting at the right time for some customers, which is great. Um, and so with that, I'll stop sharing and Joey, uh, go for it. Now, do you happen to see a matrix? From window, yep, okay, first things first. I always recommend checking the matrix because I'm gonna be talking about VROPS 7.5. And as you can see, 7.5 supports um, pretty much 7.7 and 7.8 for the 6.6 and Horizon 7, right? So we're gonna be talking about you know the Horizon, the V4H 6.6 on Horizon 7.8 with VROP 7.5. So always check this. There's a little caveat that says it's only in context of VROP for Horizon. It's not saying the, the published applications, which in our case would be you know, referring to Citrix. So real quick <clears> then, <throat> um, yep. just, to, just to maybe make it clear for me, V4H, which is the, the uh, VROP operations for Horizon, has a different versioning than Horizon and v realize proper uh v, v ROPS correct proper. okay correct well the v for h is just a pack file we're going to be installing got it and that is the 6.6 version there is not a newer one yet i do not know when another one will be um but 6.6 actually supports v ROPS 75 70 67 66 all that right all the way down to 6.6 so but we're going today going to be doing i have 7.8 in my home lab i have the B for H66, and I have Horizon or uh, VROP 75. Very cool. <clears throat> so I am not going to dive deep into how to install VROPs for uh, or VROPs Operations Manager. There is another TAM lab on that. Um, and also, if I dove too deep on that, it would take a little bit too long to install my home lab. So it's already up and going. Um, what we need for the V for H part. Now, the desktop agent is actually built into the view agent now, but it may not be up to the latest release date. So there, what you need to do is kind of find out um, if there's something new that you, you need to be monitoring, like let's say uh, the, uh, maybe 6.7 or something comes out, another version comes out, but we haven't updated the view agent in VR, uh, Horizon 7.8. So you may need to check and just kind of verify, um, do I need to put the new desktop agent for uh, um, VRealize operations for Horizon or can I still use the view agent? In my case, I'm still using the view agent. So didn't download this, but I did have to download the broker agent, which is, um, where did it go? Yeah, right here, broker agent. So this is actually what sits on the connection servers. And in my case, I have one connection server, but if you have multiple connection servers, but one pod, you'd only install this on one of the connection servers in that pod. If you have two pods, you install it on one connection server on each pod. And then what we need is the pack file that would actually go into the uh, Horizon adapter. So you need to download this. So there's technically only three that you need to jump off if there's nothing newer. Pack file goes in the VROPS, the broker agent goes on the connection server, which is in this case, the Windows box. This is only if you needed something newer that's not out there to, that you may jump out later. I am gonna jump in my Horizon Ops today right now and just kind of show you kind of quick <coughs> if you've never installed a solution or a pack file. And repository, 7.5 kind of changed. It used to be kind of different, but this is the whole new interface for 7.5 that is now obviously GA. And you just install a new management pack. You just browse to it, upload it, accept the end user agreement, and install. This probably takes about 10, 20 minutes on my home lab because uh, as I'll show real quick, my home lab is nothing special. I have three hosts. They're all Intel NUCs, and they are the seven version, but the i3. So they are not, I mean, they say 2.4, um, but they, 
they handle all this VMs that I'm running right now. Mostly it's Horizon stuff. Then they have 32 gigs of RAM each. So it does well for what I need to do, what I just need to play around with, try stuff. Um, I might even try to build some virtual desktops for my kids to play around just so I can have some kind of actual users in my home lab, but we'll see if I trust them enough. What's your storage on the back end? I am actually doing vSAN across all three. Gotcha. So you use like yeah. an NVMe and then an SSD. Is that what you're doing? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's, uh, it actually handles pretty well. Uh, it's, I've not had any issues. I did have one drive, my capacity drive die in one of them, and I just ended up swapping it out. Everything was still up and running, which is one of the benefits of vSAN. And how um, are you doing the back end? <clears throat> so, go ahead. Right now, uh, I only have one NIC, so everything is running across that one NIC. I was trying to play with NSXT, and I needed an available open NIC, so I have a USB NIC on all three of these, but I uh, pulled it out so I could start playing with NSXT and try to get everything migrated over. Um, but yeah, just one on a one gig Cisco switch. It's all sitting in my garage. So you're pushing vSAN traffic across a one gig NIC. It's all flash, all flash vSAN across yes. one gig. Got it. Yes. Thank I you. Do not recommend it. If it's a home lab, <laughs> it's all I got. <laughs> yeah, but it works. I understand. <laughs> yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, no problem. Um, one of the good things about VROPS that I like is that, uh, I don't know if anybody ever notices this, but just has alerts. Um, one of the older versions did not have this, but the newer ones, I think six something up, uh, started having this. But yeah, I had to turn off VRO because I was trying to save some resources, but everything else is receiving, as you can tell. So we installed that manager pack. In this case, it would actually say, you know, it is not configured, but we need to go and configure it. So I am not this one. I was playing, this is a Citrix. This is the published apps. This is what we can consider Citrix. So uh, you would actually have this one, Horizon. And I'm just gonna hit the little gears and go to configure. And most cases, you'll already have your vCenter uh, uh, adapter connected to your vCenter. Uh, if you're doing a fresh install, vCenter, Horizon, everything, then you have to configure this. Just click the Horizon adapter. And this is actually not a true username and password type deal. This is just a name here. And then this is a pairing key. It's a one-time kind of pairing key that would tie the connection server and the uh, VROPS together. Um, you should see a black screen now with my username and the command prompt, I hope. Yep, we do. This is my connection server. It is headless. It, uh, I was trying to be smart and goofy, and sometimes I hate it. But um, you're going to see me be a noob here. I cannot remember off the top of my head all the time which folder everything is in. Really? I'm also trying to do this just to free up some time because I end up talking fast. Let's see. There it is. So V realize operations for Horizon. There is going to be a broker agent and then there's going to be an executable file in here uh, under bin. All the languages. Oh, I do. There it is. So you're going to see the broker agent service or broker agent config. So that's what we're going to launch. V for A, V for V, broker agent config. So we installed that exe file that I had you download. This is what gets installed on your connection server. So at this point, you just type in your beer ops, uh, your fully qualified domain. Yes, I am a home lab local. Sorry, that's not anything spiffy. Um, and then that parent key. So just like a one time parent key, just whatever. I confirm it. So this is, you I are creating is. this parent key. Yes. Okay. And I got to 
move the zoom toolbar out of my way so I can actually get out of this window. So this key right here is the exact same key I was typing in over there. So I'm gonna hit okay. It's gonna save that key on the VROPS and then I need to go back into here and then do pair. It's going to do that and it says pairing successful. This port is not, I don't think it comes up uh, by default, so you need to know it's 3091, um, but there's multiple blogs and stuff out there that kind of talk to it if the documentation doesn't just point you in that direction, but 3091. And then now it's going to ask you for your horizon. So I created a local account on my horizon, which just timed out. So. Oh, real quick, um, Benjamin, go for it. Mm -hmm. you, you're muted, by the way. Um, in the chat, Benjamin said he wanted to add a point. Um, can anybody hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Yes, okay, cool. All right, the headset works. Um, hey, um, guys, I just wanted to just t um, go back to the original one about the pairing. Um, I had a case, well, two cases, that if the test, even though the pairing is successful, if the test doesn't work whenever you're pairing it, that, then nothing will work. Mm. So you have to do both, the pairing and so the you're, test. You're saying the test right here. Yep, that one. Yeah, I do. I do know that the test underneath the VROPS, uh, like this, doesn't matter. No, that this one. I'll always see. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. One for me, every. Yeah. yeah, for me, every time I tested it, it always says, "Oh, successful." Then I'm like, "Well," and then I'd find some firewall policy that actually denied uh, right. the two talking to each other. So th I, I never talk about this one, but I didn't know. Uh, I have not ran into an issue myself on. This one. Yeah, you got to do the you got to do both. You got to do the pairing and the test because even though the pairing will be successful, if you click on the test and that test fails, then you're not going to get any data in VR ops. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. So should you do I guess test first and then pair or pair then um, test? Um, um pair first and then test. Okay. There we go. We got it documented in a TAM lab session. <laughs> cool. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you're very welcome, guys. So I have a local account that's actually an AD account that is uh, under my Horizon admin group um, that I use to pair anything further to the connection servers. So go through that. Event database, I guess I, my machines run a little slower, but I skipped right over that. I'm just using the um, USA account. Uh, maybe if you're in production, you should probably secure this a little better, but um, for me, this is fine. I am not going to specify any pools because I want to include everything. And then I'm also monitoring application pools and hosted applications to RDSH. So just want to leave all that on. If you are not doing RDSH and you never plan on doing it, you can uncheck that. Um, this is one that I meant to do. I set up app volumes. Let's see if it'll work here real quick. Uh, I don't know the port offhand. Let me try 443. If this fails, I'll just skip it and go. Maybe do another one. Yep. Oh, there we go. Uh, I have a a kind of a DNS round robin for AVM, but the actual server name is AVM at one, so I didn't know if that would work or not. So there we go. So that at volumes, and now I actually start monitoring um, some additional stuff, and maybe like how long it takes to, or how many app stacks a user logs into. But off chance, I have been getting how long it takes to load the app stacks. I do not have any UAGs, so I have not checked that. And then I just leave everything else by default. Again, default. If you open up a ticket with support, they may ask you to change some of the stuff, uh, but I have yet to do that.
page. And it should pop up here. Well, while that's working here real quick, we had a comment in the chat from Scott uh, just posting a, uh, a blog post from Carl Stallhood, which is always uh, gold. Yes. So thanks for sharing, uh, Scott. He is a favorite of all my customers and mine. Um, so there, the only change I made so far was just the add volumes and then finish. And now I'm going to go back into here. So you paired it, everything's good. Um, say if you had more than one DROPS, let's say you had like a, um, a, I think they call it a slave or a replica, um, you could point it to that. In my instance, uh, I only need just the one because I have a small vCenter and a small horizon. If you have a large vCenter and a large horizon, you may split it up so that uh, one collector is doing horizon, one's doing vCenter. And um, actually, the best practice is to uh, hook that up to a remote collector. There you go, remote collector. Thank you. Yeah, um, yeah, that that's going to be the number one thing that we'll recommend and support if they're experiencing issues with data not coming in, is get that on a get the V for H adapter on a remote collector. Yep, I had one customer that uh, actually had two different environments, uh, Horizon environments, and that's what support told them is that hey, put a remote collector in that one because it's in a separate data center, separate network and they just kind of fumbled up to the master. Hmm. So there we go. And everything is collecting, data is receiving. Refresh it just to make sure. Of course it defaults off, there we go. There we go, all right. So now, um, all the dashboards you'll see initially, uh, I click on a lot, so you're seeing everything that I've clicked on, but under, all dashboards, once my screen catches up, there's Horizon. Come on. It's kind of like someone looking over your shoulder and everything's running slower. There we go. And I just unchecked them all, great. Uh, but here's all the default dashboards that Horizon comes with. The biggest one I live in is the help desk tool. Uh, let me rephrase that, the help desk dashboard. I don't want to get the two mixed up. So uh, right now uh, on my other screen, I don't know if I can switch that real quick. Let's try it. It may not work too well since it's uh, kind of a huge screen. Do you see a couple of desktop RDSH? Yeah, edit PDFs. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So the edit, this one is logged out, is my kind of my Windows 10 jump box. This is doing blast right now. The edit PDF, this Foxit Pro is, is a app stack desk, uh, application. Uh, so Windows 10. That's uh, the jump box. The Windows 10 Instant Clones, this is doing PC over P because I want to show some of the dashboards. And I'll just log in just to make sure everything's refreshing. The RDSH, this is just a typical RDP type session. And then I have this calculator, which is a R RDSH app, app B, whatever you want to call it, the Horizon apps for us. So going into here, now you're seeing all that. Um, this is a dead session. Um, I say dead and I do not have it open, which is why the protocol is question mark, but the session is actually alive on the RDSH at B box. Um, this is the RDSH instance I had open. This is my Windows 10, 10 jump box and then the linked clone. Let me do a refresh here real quick. Why is my calculator not showing up? It might be understood as this one for some reason. Okay, I'll figure that out later. Um, but 
yeah, see, I'm getting question marks on my ass stats. Hopefully that'll start filling in soon. But if I go into my jump box, this is where some of my customers are like, why would I use V4H? I'm like, well, because of this. You do not get this information on any other monitoring tool. Um, I had a customer using a competitor and their infrastructure team wanted to do away with VROPS because they were not using it anymore. And I came in uh, under the EEC team of the customer and was able to basically blow away what they had because it was one of the older versions, rebuilt fresh, um, got this stood up, and then they were actually start seeing some of the uh, kind of the bandwidth and everything that their library was using and kind of seeing some issues in networking that the other monitoring tool wouldn't have seen. So they did away with a competitor and stuck around with V4H. So I'm here seeing now my login time was about four seconds. Um, um, we can't yep. see your screen. Oh yeah, I didn't switch the screen, thank you. Yeah. I am a goober. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, no problem. There we okay, go. now do you see my reps? Okay, yeah. yeah. So there we go. All that I just said, there it is. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, like this, uh, the blast estimate went uh, bandwidth. They were seeing some kind of packet loss. They're doing PC over IP. So I'm going to switch to my PC over IP desktop so you can kind of see some of that data coming in. Uh, obviously, I'm glad I'm not seeing any packet loss since this is all in my home lab and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty smashing that one gig NIC on each one of those hosts. But, um, yeah, my login time, everything. Uh, this doesn't surprise me because of all this stuff over here. I am getting a lot of kind of, uh, I need to probably get another host. I need to kind of make things a little bit better. I need to update the BIOS and one of my NUCs as well. So this is where like the VROPS uh, alerts comes in. Not the V4H, but the VROPS, but you would have both here. Your VM metrics and then kind of a breakdown. So even though I didn't uh, add the uh, app stack or the app volumes to it, I was already getting this information, which I was okay with. Uh, I wanted to know what part of my login process was taking the longest. Um, and usually just the, the app stacks was taking about five seconds, which to my customers, they would be happy with that. Um, Let's go to session processes. So I've had some customers, they're like, hey, we want to know what uh, they might be running on their VDI that might be eating up a bunch of resources. Or, you know, they're kind of want to know what's going on right now. So you can run those Git desktop processes. You can see the services or a trace route. And when you hit go, it'll actually use like the view agent to uh, go and run some of this task. And I was running the background. We'll come back to it. Again, you get some of the bureau stuff too, as you're kind of seeing on the right side. And then here's my host. I'm on my ESX03, and it'll tell you everything else that's going on with it. So if you're seeing some of this up here, um, kind of alerting you, you can go, okay, what's going on with the neighboring VMs on there? What's you know what's what's going on? You know, kind of deal. This is why I love VROPs and V4H kind of all in one window. I actually have one customer that's using this for the help desk. This is how they monitor everything for a day-to-day -day basis. And then here's the processes. So um, on that desktop, I have Chrome running at you know, 0.75. Gives you every kind of application or whatever's running at the time, a process. And then trace route. Trace route should match up to what you're getting on bait, um, you know, bandwidth packet loss, anything like that. You should be kind of matching up with the round trip latency. So real quick, we have a, a couple of comments in chat worth bringing up. So, so Calvin um, commented in the customer environment, uh, Horizon Pods, they should dedicate a connection server for the VROPS broker. Um, yeah. VROPS appliance and V uh, for H are a separate developer team. Always check the compatibility matrix. Um, 
do not use with view agent as it might use the older VROPS version as part of the view agent. Okay. So there you go. Cool. And then uh, let's see, we have from Michael, uh, didn't they change the recommendation recently and say you should no longer need a de dedicated connection server for V4H? So that's kind of encounter to Calvin. Any, any thoughts from anybody yeah. on the line? I mean, like, should it be dedicated or not? So that's, that's kind of like what I said initially, you only need one connection server per pod to okay. actually have that broker agent. Um, I think if you have two, then it just kind of messes up and you know, messes up what you're looking at. Uh, maybe like okay. Horizon infrastructure or VDI pools. I think, um, I think it was more Joey around the uh, keeping it in a load balancing pool for servicing user connections. And just seeing okay. if you needed to segment that connection server off specifically for V4H traffic and not handle user authentication requests. Oh, uh, you're seeing one separately completely for them. Yep, that's correct. Yeah. I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Especially I just in a remember heavy, heavy environment. With, with, um, with support and consulting, and I know it had been a standard for a long time, and I think there, there's a chance it may still be the case, but I, I thought I had heard otherwise. Yeah, from PSO, PSO perspective, most of the time we ask the customer to dedicate one of the connection servers for all the VROP, right? That server dedicate for everything VROP and the other connection server just for day-to-day -day user logged in status and checked in. So uh, in, in y'all's uh, background, have you had, so I've got a customer that's got 8,500 con concurrent users and they kind of hit the max on how many connection servers they can use. Um, how would you see that kind of going on? Would you still just try to dedicate one as much as possible just to the V4H kind of information or would you be okay if they kind of did both? They should be able to um, do one. Not, okay. They, they should be able to do one and then the connection server just kind of for PSO rule of thumb, each connection server able to handle like, let's say 2000, right? But we right. always go back to revert down to the 1000. So let's just say you have a customer that have 5000. Well, you're, you know, the maximum pod is seven connection server. And if you take one of them out because for the rewrap, so you have six of them for your load balance, the whole, your customer. So you should have able to accommodate for that. So one pod, you know, six server, you should run under 10,000 customer no, without okay. any problem. Sounds good. I'll remember that. Thank you. Now, would that be considered though, and this is a question uh, that Tony popped in there, by having VROPs looking at one, one server, would that be considered a single point of failure for monitoring? So if that server had to go down for maintenance or crashed or whatever else, you'd lose visibility, right? Just for temporary, yes, uh -huh. correct. Okay. Yeah, like if, if it was not going to come back up, you could install the broker agent on another one, but I don't think you'd get the history. Yeah, just not getting a history if that one server that handling all the VROP go down. But again, as you everybody know, there should be only one VROP uh, broker per pod. So regardless of which one you put, it's going to go down for your maintenance anyway. Got it. All right. Cool. So do you lose the historical data as well when that uh, broker agent goes down or is that being collected and will be and you'll be able to get access to it once you know once the broker agent is up again yeah that's a very good question so yeah it does go down what happened is that if that server you're in maintenance when you're in a maintenance mode and you do the update patch whatever during that time it's not going to be able to collect anything because the broker agent services is going to be down at that time and then until it's go up online or back online then it's able to go collect all the other data that you know all the agent report back so there might be a little gap vrops will still be up and running Yes, correct. Yes. And then once the server is restored. Now, if that server for some reason blows up, you know, so it's not maintenance, but something catastrophic happens, could you attach it to another connection server, point it to the horizon infrastructure, and then it would just resume? Yes, Obviously, correct. it was a gap. Okay. Yeah. So let's just say like this, you know, as everybody knows, 
there is a maximum capacity of seven connection server in a pod. Sure. And let's just say connection server three is dedicated for rerob. And if that server ever go down, and what you have to do is either rebuild that or have a decision to, you know what, let's switch over. Let's ded dedicate a connection server number four as a rerob. So you just install the broker and you get everything back online. So you still want to capture and collect all the data as soon as you can Got due it. to the time frame. Yeah, yeah. OK. That is very good information to have. I'm glad you guys joined this call. Yeah. Evidently, that is why you cannot have a high availability for VROP support for Ryzen. I had a customer asked me about that a while back. They were they were excited about the high availability for VROPs in general, and then realizing that you have that one single point of failure with a single connection server. We can barely hear you. Oh, sorry about that. It's my connection. Fine. Yeah, that, that totally makes sense. Like you said, you can't have high ability for V4H, but you could have high ability for VROPs. But yeah. Uh, I was just kind of clicking through just so you guys can kind of see some of the other dashboards. Um, this is the application Horizon Apps or App B, you know, if we want to think about it that way. If your customers are talking about moving from, let's say, Citrix or App B and then want to do Horizon Apps, essentially it's the same thing in the background. We need. We need a uh, RDSH server and then just install applications. You put the Horizon View agent on there and it starts collecting. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm going to try to figure out why on the help desk I'm not seeing the collector, even less the one that is running. Um, I'll have to play around a little more of that. Hmm. So, one of the things I always get a question on from my customers that uh, half horizon is how do they get notifications and today uh, Horizon does not have like a notifications type Mechanism, so I always refer back to v4h um, I am Just kind of bouncing off my hotmail sir uh, hotmail account because you know everyone has a hotmail that they send spam to uh, If you go into management and then outbound settings There you go you can just set up a standard email plugin. Uh, I guess I can just kind of show you how my setup is. There you go. There's my email address. You guys can send all your spam to as well. Oh yeah, it's gonna fail because I didn't type in a password. This was kind of messing me up initially. I was uh, preparing for this, and then I was like, "Why is my relay not working?" Uh, yeah, because the dot 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 for the password is not filled in, even though it was already saved. And I just have the wrong password in, so I use my lab password, not my actual real password. So just to show that that does work. Here we go. Test connection is successful. And then I don't know if this is new in 7.5. I can't remember 7.0. I didn't have it very long. Um, but the alerts is actually, and notifications are actually underneath alerts, alert settings and notifications. It used to be under content. And then notification settings. That took me a second to realize. So these are some of the default notifications I send out of the box for my customers. Um, this one always seems to bite them in the butt if they have persistent desktops. This is a default VROS uh, out, you know, kind of monitoring. This is not really tied to V4H, but um, just want to know what the virtual disk is getting full. So. Again, in my lab, I don't care uh, to get notified too much, so I delay it by 30 minutes because you know maintenance does take a little bit longer in my home lab than production. Uh, I do not want to get spammed too much, so only twice, and then notify them again 60 minutes. So it should, 30 minutes, uh, if my drive is full, it'll notify me on the first time at 60 minutes, and notify me again at 60 minutes. And then I do object type. As you can see, there's different kind of uh, scopes you can use virtual machine i'll show you what everything else uh let me minimize the horizon one the recent one so these are all the different type of object types we can play around with in theorops and it's it's crazy i wish i uh was doing a lot more so i could play around some more um but object type virtual machine alert definition and one more uh virtual machines where to go But one or more virtual machine guest file systems running out of this space. I want to get critical, immediate, and warning. 
and then just because I don't want to get spammed too much, I only do new and updated. Canceled, I'm not too worried about because for me as a, uh, a user, I would want to know when it happened the first time, if it happened again, I want to know. If it gets canceled, don't spam me because most sometimes it might get canceled because someone deleted a large file and then did something again and it comes up again as new and then updated. And then you can also break your collector group down. And please chime in if anybody else has got like better notifications that they uh, they like with their customers or some other stuff that they recommend. But then as a horizon environment, these were uh, customers kind of get bit is if they do maintenance and then the agents for some reason not talking back to the broker or the agents not talking back to the connection server. We want to know why. Usually it's because, you know, the the OS may have uh, blue screened or the agent was not reinstalled right or whatever. So I have it broken up by, I want to know about the agent for RDSH, I want to know about the agent for the VDI and the agent for the horizon. And just so you can kind of see, again, same settings. And then not receiving data from the desktop agent. Object type, VDI desktop session, alert definition, not receiving data. Same kind of stuff here. I have yet to have one hit, but just to kind of show you what that looks like. And where did it go? There it is. So this is the kind of alert that you'll get in your email. Um, it's kind of ugly. I'd like to play around with this a little more to break. I don't need a whole bunch of this information, but my uh, Figurelize login site is running pretty high. I am at that 95 to whatever ratio. And then it gives you recommendations. This actually kind of helps that help desk group that I worked with at a customer site because they're like, okay, so what do we do when we get these alerts? I'm like, well, there's recommendations right here. Let's let's talk about them. You know, kind of get them and they break it down. Um, you can actually, one of the things I was playing with is under, let me go back to home. I don't think I have it set up on this account. You can actually create, like uh, a lot of my customers have those monitors that just kind of flip back on different products, different monitoring solutions so they know what's going on. You can actually create like a external, I don't know, whatever it's called, external dashboard or whatever that account, an external account that is on authenticated that just kind of logs in and sees everything read only. They can't make any changes, but I've heard that's good for CXO types so that they can just kind of see things, but not play around with them. Um, but you can create a kind of a rolling desktop. So it goes through certain ones and I'll maybe update this or something. I cannot remember offhand 7.5 how to do it. But it can go through like, okay, I want my help desk. I want my infrastructure. You know, I want SDC. You know, you can kind of see the environment and it just flips on the screen for you at a, whatever interval it is. I do not remember how to do that though on 7.5. It's good though to so, know that that's there. I mean, that's that the yeah. anonymous access to things, regardless of, you know, V for H is something that, um, you know, a lot of our customers look for. So just knowing that we can do that and that the option exists to have a rotating, you know, carousel of um, content is just great to know. Yeah. Uh, once I figure it out, maybe I'll send out like a daily email or something. Um, but yeah, that, that was something that had been requested for, I don't know, many years and it got included, I think in 7.0. Is there any more questions? I know I've kind of rushed through it, but uh, like I said, I've got customers that kind of love this tool, so I'm happy to actually play around with it myself. Any um, additional reports get added when you when you add the management pack? Um, yes, that's a very good question. On the left there, yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for the screen to refresh. Oh, got it. <laughs> I know if I don't see a bunch of this, then my screen is not done yet. Come on. 
Yeah, I'm just going to filter by horizon. So there we go. So that's another thing you could send out and do automated kind of details. Uh, I don't think I have any. Yeah, I do have some already generated. Let's just look at them. So. Oh, so, as in pull usage, 30 day, I don't have any 30 day trends. You'll see it, but you know, kind of, this is what I was actually doing something like this for a customer that needed cost back or show back mm. type functionality. And it's not there and you know, VRB or anything for horizon. So I had it break down per pool, which became a headache because they have probably, you know, 20, 30 pools and they keep growing. Um, but, it would show them like per pool and how many users they had. I, I think this one would probably show a little more of that, but I don't have a 30 day yet. Um, yeah. At the time I had this one desktop up for 62 hours and that one for 10, uh, not even, not even close to a 10th of an hour. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's some good reports in here. I think, um, some reason they don't really care about the license compliance for until it, you know, into their ELA or something, but you know, that's a good one to have. Um, let's see, let's see what the VDI desktop session stats looks like. There used to be a way of changing this. Uh, default in this. I think mm -hmm. someone actually posted a question in a social cast about it. Um, but mm. sorry, I had a cough and then my phone would come on mute. Um, but yeah, it kind of breaks it down. I like not that. getting much of this because I, mean, I wasn't doing any PC over P at the time, but you know, you could break that down if you were doing it. So these are just good information to have. Maybe do a monthly kind of deal and kind of, so you have like what's been going on, how your environment's grown. I think the executive summary is one that might be useful. I don't know. It just depends on your executives. This is not a horizon one though. This is a VR up one kind of breaks it. It's kind of almost does like a screenshot of the dash dashboards. Oh, got it. So if they don't want to log in anything, you can kind of shoot them in this and then you can actually set these up as a recurring if you want. So you can do like a schedule. So let's just go through that. I'll just do a usage. Oh, well. Does your user not have rights to? Yeah, I don't think it does. I'm logged in as my VIDM account instead of the local. Got it. I don't think I gave him rights. But yeah, that's what I was doing for a customer. I think it's pool usage one I was, I was doing. Um, and then I just had to kind of clone it for every pool and kind of break it down to what pool it was. So every time they create a new Horizon desktop pool, then we had to go through and filter it. And I have not done that on 7.5 yet. Oh, let's see what's the cover page. Can we change that here? There we go. There's one way of doing it. Bring it to the X in the corner. Yeah. So it's like you can change that image. Mm -hmm. There you go. Cool. You've been learned. Any other questions? Uh, yeah. So in the chat, uh, Scott um, asked if you could look at the licensing on the admin panel. Um, licensing for Horizon or licensing says, for the difference between the licensing the desktop and VDI oh. support servers. Yeah, you need to create a group. Uh, kind of refresh me what you're talking about. Hmm. 
All right, Scott, you're, you said you had a funky connection. Any, any, any okay. other detail? Yeah. Any other details, Scott, on, you can throw in the chat or I could hear you just fine. You're just kind of quiet. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Uh, yes, that, that's a good, good question. Ah, okay. You, uh, on here, um, by default, everything kind of falls under the VROPS licensing. So if you have a vCenter that is, um, before you couldn't do a vCenter and Horizon stuff together, then I still wouldn't recommend doing that, but I had one customer that was, they wanted one massive VROPS with Horizon so it monitored the thousands of servers they had plus the other desktops they had. But in here, you're supposed to go into VROPS Horizon Um, so I'm going to go next to check it for horizon. And then here, this is what he's, I think he's talking about. So you have to break it down by view pod. Uh, why is it not broken down? So it's supposed to be relationships. Child of parent of send it of. Uh, I think it contains, let's see if that'll work. And there's a blogger, um, Stallhood has that as well. But you're supposed to break it down so that then you say, I'm actually surprised, why is this not set up already? Because I've done that. Did it not follow? Let me cancel this. Horizon. But you're supposed to break it, break it down so that it knows, um, like the view pod is the connection server, the host system, or the ESX host. The virtual machines are the VDI, mm. and the data store is the data stores. Um, I think you can take out data center, but then it would know that that is the virtual belongs to V for H. And yeah. they would start using the V4H licensing instead of the VROS licensing. So in most cases, when you get uh, Horizon Suite uh, or no, yeah, Horizon Suite Enterprise, it, it comes with V4H, I believe. Uh, Advanced may as well, but you get uh, like so many v, VROPS licenses, maybe like less than 10, and then you get your VROPS for how many concurrent users or whatever you buy it that way. Um, I may have been okay with that because I don't have a whole bunch of uh, licenses I need to use. I'm getting around it, but um, definitely you have to follow that. Uh, Carl Stallhood has a great blog article that talks to you on how to do that. Kind of wish I had his uh, blog article open right now so I could show that. That's all right, um, Scott. If you're up, oh, there we go. Thanks. Perfect. And you got it. Up. Oh, no, no, no. He just said thanks for answering the question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions? We're coming close to that top of the hour. Well, I mean, you know, I know it's not more, a question, more of a statement. I, I appreciate you running through this. Um, you know, we have customers that have Horizon and don't really know what this is all about. So it's hard for us to speak to it. Uh, this looks really straightforward. Um, and a couple of gotchas, right? You know, one connection server, um, you got to worry about how do you group the licenses and stuff like that. Um, but there's a ton of value in this, right? Like, I'm going to go back to old Tam customer who's, you know, no longer a customer, um, but share this with them. Because um, having it all right here is, is fantastic. Yep, and something you can always revert back to on the lab now is how can you help your customer walk through it or whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Okay, cool. So I well, appreciate everyone jumping on.